And each, this is going to be the longest walk in in five minute history. Well, this is my big studio, so. We're going to do a walk in, it's a good place to do it. Exactly. How many hours a day do you actually work in? Um, good many. I'm here from 8 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. So, how many is that? Almost. That is yeah. 11 hours. It's good, 11 hours, hours. yeah. <laughs> but I do a regular day, which is important to me. And what is the suit? Well, you know, it's, it's one of my, my working clothes on underneath. It keeps the paint and all the other muck off. You speak several languages. I'm going to give you a choice of two, Hebrew or Hindi, to count us down in. Hindi, I think. Ek, do, teen, char, panch. So you were born in India. I was. Your mother was an Iraqi Jew. Yes. And then you went to work on a kibbutz in Israel. Yeah, in the early 70s. Which Formative was a experience? Great experience. I loved it. I loved the sense of communal life that it brought. And then you came via Europe, traveling through Europe, to England. But in 1979, you went back to India, and that was a pretty important trip in terms of your development as an artist. Well, art school here, of course, had been a, a me kind of educating myself in a certain tradition, a tradition of European art. I felt I needed to do something else. Um, and understand more who I am as a being, as an artist. And I suspected, of course, uh, that since I'd grown up in India, that's where I should go. Um, so I spent some time there and, and found that much of what I was involved in was, in fact, uh, there, and I recognized it. And so, understanding who you are, understanding the, the you-ness in you, has been a big part of your life, hasn't it? You did psychoanalysis for 15 years. You underwent it. Yeah, um, psychoanalysis um, as, a, as a process has always been very, very important to me. Um, I find that here in the studio, it is one of the tools that I use um, uh, necessarily in order to, 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 to take a thought process forward. I make abstract art, but um, its abstraction it has a, abstraction, if you like, has a propensity to meaning. And it's that, it's the manipulation, if you like, of that will to meaning that, that I'm interested in, and that has some relation to psychoanalytical processes. Some would say there's a religiosity or a spiritual dimension to your work. Are you religious as a man? I think we're religious beings, and yes, I am. When you're asked to create public art, does that give an extra sense of pressure? Um, public art is difficult because uh, one of the things that you're dealing with, of course, is a public sense of place or space. Um, and the, the, the object of it, of course, needs somehow to engage. Um, this art is good at intimacy. It's good at saying, come and belong, come and be part of the, the, this process. Um, but making it happen on a large scale in a large-scale public venue is, is complicated. So it's a, it's a complex process. Scale is obviously crucial to a lot of what you do. Intimidating or liberating, or sometimes both? Well, both, I'd say. Um, um, scale, of course, is a tool of sculpture, and I, I'm not at all shy about it. I feel that s scale is something that one has to take on as a sculptor, but um, big isn't always meaningful. So um, uh, the warning there is that, that large-scale has to be tempered in some sense um, with, um, um, with, with meaning or with, with, with something deeper. Do you set out to send a certain message? I really feel I have nothing to say as an <laughs> artist, and I think that's a very important thing because what it does, in fact, is liberate the process for me. Um, for me and for the viewer, for that matter. It you allows give them space. space. Yeah. It allows space. Um, do you feel that you stand on the edge of certainty but also edginess, in between meaning and non-meaning in a way? Um, I think that's crucial, to be, uh, if you like, in limbo, uh, in between. Um, um, art works best, I think, when it's um, um, neither saying something nor not saying something, but somewhere in between, where the, so the viewer has a, a place, a, 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 a way in. I've heard you describe the color red. What does the color blue mean to you? Um, really, as a colorist, I'm interested in darkness. Now, much of the tradition of, 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 of color and art is from color to light. Mine seems to be the other way around. Um, red, of course, uh, is 
wonderful at a certain kind of visceral, bodily, interior darkness. Blue um, has to be the darkness of the underworld and, and of course, of, of, of the deep, deep sky. What do you think Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci would have made of Anish Kapoor's work? I'm sure they would have been baffled by it, but then presuming that if, if they lived now, they'd know the, the idiom. Um, and, um, um, I'm, I, well, I don't know, I hope they'd make, make good of it. Now, you're a very, very warm person, I know that. There's also a temper, isn't there? It certainly is. And an explosiveness. It certainly is. <laughs> I'm very determined about what I want to do. Um, and um, Five seconds. Uh, that, that, that sort of guides me. So I stick to it. Are you happy? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and a great laugh as well. Go. It's been really good fun. Thank you very Excellent. much. Thank you. It's great.